If you or your loved one needs a laparoscopic hysterectomy, here is some valuable information for you. From what happens in the operating theatre, whether it hurts or not, when you can go back home, to how surgeons see inside the dark recesses of the abdomen, when laparoscopies can be performed and when they can't, it's all here. These insights come from science and my 25 years of experience with patients. It will be a long video but hopefully interesting. Knowing these details will not only speed up recovery, but also help you make informed decisions at various steps. Laparoscopic hysterectomy, keyhole surgery, or robot-assisted hysterectomy, whatever you call it, it has gained considerable acceptance amongst both patients and surgeons over the past two decades. In our unit, we regularly perform normal hysterectomies and even cancer surgeries laparoscopically. The results are absolutely astonishing. After hour-long cancer surgeries, when patients recover and go home within a few days, we see a smile on their faces. When patients walk home, our hearts too are filled with joy. Back in England, many patients even used to go home the same day. It takes a surgeon several years to master laparoscopic surgery, whether it's classical laparoscopic procedure or robot-assisted ones. First, you need to know the spelling right. The Greek word lepara means abdomen, and in modern Latin, scopium means to see clearly. In modern English, laparoscopy means to see clearly inside the abdomen using a camera. Some mistakenly call it laparoscopy. If the spelling is wrong, Google will not give you right information about this and its benefits or drawbacks. How is laparoscopy surgery done? This type of surgery is done using truly groundbreaking technologies. It is highly popular for performing complex surgeries inside the abdomen without making large cuts. In this surgery, a small incisions are made to insert a long, thin telescope-like camera and several sling instruments like long sticks, which acts like hands inside the abdomen. The surgeon watches a clear picture on the monitor from outside the abdomen using the telescope and moves the slender instruments to perform the surgery. This ultra-modern surgical technology is undoubtedly one of the greatest discoveries in the history of the world. The story of how this discovery came about is quite amazing, but that's a tale for another day. If you want to know more, subscribe to the channel and comment below. I will let you know once it is published. How is the uterus removed from the body? Many people ask, doctor, once you finish the surgery, how is the uterus removed from the body? Let me clear the mystery. After the surgery, the operated uterus is removed through the vagina or birth passage. What are the benefits of laparoscopy compared to open surgery? Hands down, the cosmetic outcomes of laparoscopy are better compared to open surgery. With laparoscopy, you hardly get any scars on your abdomen. Since there is no need to cut through the abdominal wall, recovery is faster. Pain, blood loss and other issues are also less compared to open surgery. In some cases, the risk of infection is lower too, which is why nowadays both doctors and patients often prefer laparoscopic surgery whenever it is feasible or appropriate. When can laparoscopic hysterectomy be performed? Laparoscopic surgery can be performed for menstrual issues, lower abdominal pain, prolapse, adenomyosis, endometriosis, fibroid, and some types of gynecological cancers too. It can also be used for certain precancerous conditions and ovarian cysts. When is laparoscopy surgery not advisable? The primary goal of surgery is to ensure patient's well-being. Regardless of whether it is a laparoscopy or open surgery, the procedure should ultimately serve the best interest of the patient. Following certain international guidelines, open surgery is recommended in some cases to safeguard the patient's interest. Even those of us trained in laparoscopy and robotic surgery sometimes recommend open surgery for the patient's benefit. Medical science's perspective is evolving. The mindset of surgeons, I will do laparoscopy just because I can, is outdated. Our singular priority is to protect patient's best interest. In some cases of fibroids, complex ovarian cysts, ovarian tumors, and certain cancers, open surgery is preferred over laparoscopy or robotic surgery. Although having cancer does not necessarily mean open surgery is required, in some cases, whether for cancer or benign conditions, open surgery better protects patients' long-term interests. What types of hysterectomy can be done with laparoscopy? 
While we typically think of a hysterectomy as a single operation, there are actually numerous types of hysterectomies. All these types can be performed via laparoscopy, including total, subtotal, and radical hysterectomies. There are at least five variations of radical hysterectomy and other special surgeries such as cytoreduction hysterectomy, which is done in cases of cancer. All these can be performed laparoscopically. However, which type of hysterectomy is suitable for you will be discussed in person by your doctor. Additionally, some hysterectomies may require removal of one or both ovaries or one or both fallopian tubes. The type of preparation and tests needed before surgery will be discussed in person with your doctor. We have a knowledge source called Prehabilitation which provides information on pre-surgery preparation. Here is the link for you to check out and do your homework. This helps women to recover better. Additionally, it is important to have a detailed discussion with your doctor about your specific problem and the type of operation required. Not all problems can be solved with a hysterectomy. These discussions should be held in the clinic with your doctor because every patient is unique. The operation that was done for one patient may not be suitable for another. Gynecology is now entirely a personalized field of medicine. What happens on the day of surgery? Some gynecologists admit patients on the day of the surgery. However, for type of the surgeries that we usually perform, which are a bit more complex, we often ask patients to be admitted on the day before. After admission, the doctor, anesthetist and nursing staff will conduct thorough medical checks, have conversations with you, they will listen to your preferences and concern. Before the surgery, they will obtain your consent which involves several important steps. What happens in the operating theatre? At a designated time, you will be taken to operating theatre. Many people feel scared about entering the theatre, but this fear is mostly due to the fear of unknown. Worries about what will and won't happen in the OT can create anxiety. However, our team always keeps that in mind and most of our patients thank us after their operation for the friendly environment they experienced in the operating theatre. If an intravenous line was not set up in the ward, the anesthetist will insert once you enter the OT. Through this IV line, the initial medications will be administered. Once the anesthetic medications are administered through this IV line, you will first fall asleep. And then the main steps of the surgery will start. Sometimes for more complex surgeries, an epidural analgesia is required. That is a type of pain relief which goes to the back. This makes the patient pain free for three to four days after surgery. If required, this epidural analgesia will be administered before you are put to sleep. Once you are asleep, you will receive various medications and a catheter will be inserted into urinary bladder to keep it deflated, rested and safe during laparoscopy surgery. Through the IV line, saline, fluids and other medications will be administered continuously. Needless to say, you will be asleep during all this time and your breathing will be maintained by the anesthetist. Next, a vaginal examination will be conducted using special surgical instruments. The organs around the uterus will be safely navigated and surgery will commence. Various risks are always present during surgery and there is a whole science behind the risk management during operations. We'll discuss these fascinating topics in detail later. The main expense of surgery is spent on minimizing these risks. Anyway, once your anesthesia is complete, a small incision of 1 to 2 cm is made near the navel or belly button, through which medical gas is introduced into the abdomen along with the camera. Both the gas and the camera are removed from the abdomen after the surgery. This camera is not like normal camera. It is a kind of telescope or thin rod with a powerful optical fiber light source. The bright light from this camera allows the surgeon to see details inside the dark abdomen clearly and perform the surgery. The way this laparoscope's light and instruments are inserted into the body through optical fiber is truly astonishing science. Not just any light can be used for laparoscopy surgery. Although expensive, advanced genin or LED bulbs work exceptionally well in this context. What will I experience after operation? When you regain your consciousness, you will typically won't feel any pain. Instead, you might experience a slight scratchiness in your throat or feel a little groggy. You will feel mild pain or nausea. Just let the nurses know and they will provide medications to help you. A catheter will be placed in your urinary tract. 
this catheter plays a crucial role. If you had a brevial caesarean section, the urinary bladder might sometimes adhere deeply to the uterus. In such cases, a catheter is needed to give the bladder a rest. The catheter is usually removed within a few hours to few days. Once you are awake, you will gradually start drinking water, followed by liquid tide, then semi-solids and eventually soft food. While in the scars or stitches B, typically, there will be three to four small incision scars on your abdomen, ranging from five millimeter to one centimeter. Additionally, there will be some stitches at the vaginal root while the uterus was removed through. But these are not visible from outside. Most laparoscopy stitches dissolve on their own later on. How long does laparoscopy surgery stay? The duration varies for each person. When we start a surgery, our sole focus is to provide you with the maximum benefit from the operation. We are prepared to take as much as time as needed for that. On average, it can take anywhere from one and a half hours to six to seven hours, depending on the type of surgery required inside the abdomen. What common problems might occur after surgery? Most surgeries are completed smoothly without any issues. However, sometimes pain medications may be needed. There is a slight possibility of minor infections, vaginal discharge or light vaginal bleeding. It is common to experience right shoulder pain after laparoscopy operation. This usually resolves itself after some time. To fully understand the risks, have a direct conversation with your doctor. Can you have sex after laparoscopy surgery? Of course you can. Once the stitches have healed, usually a few weeks after the surgery, there are no restrictions on having sex. Will you experience menopause after a laparoscopic hysterectomy? If the operation involves removing the uterus, your menstrual bleeding will stop. If the ovaries are removed too during procedure, you will experience menopause. However, if you have already gone through menopause before surgery, you already had it. Menopause is a natural event on every woman's life. Can you get pregnant after a laparoscopic hysterectomy? Since a hysterectomy involves removing the uterus, pregnancy is not possible. However, if you have infertility issues and in some special cases, if you wish to preserve eggs for future surrogacy or similar treatments, discuss this with your doctor before planning for the surgery. When can I take a bath after surgery? You can take a shower two days after the surgery. Though, we advise against using bathtub or swimming pool for six weeks. Don't worry, water won't seep into your small abdominal cuts. We will teach you how to keep the laparoscopy incision dry and apply ointments before you go home. How will the risk of blood clots be reduced after the operation? Internationally, there is a continuous awareness about this among both patients and doctors. Although, awareness in India may be lower than needed. Perhaps it's to save costs. However, perspectives are changing. During the operation, a type of compression stocking and special massage boots are used to prevent unwanted deep pain thrombosis in the calf muscle. These are not the only precautions. We adopt various preventive measures. Additionally, after the operation, a physiotherapist will help you become mobile quickly, restoring both your ability to work and your confidence. Light exercises, including some lung exercises, will be necessary after the surgery. We'll provide you with full training. Do I need a pap smear after surgery? If your cervix was removed during the operation and there were no abnormalities, you won't need further pap smears. When can I go home after the operation? Most patients go home within two or seven days after the operation. There are several things to watch out when you are home. If you would like a list of what to look out for the first 14 days and when to call the doctor, fill out the form below and we will send you a PDF copy. When is the follow-up due? Your follow-up is usually in 10 to 14 days after the surgery. Each patient is different, so we provide personalized instructions on what precautions to take after going home. Below is a link to our video on living well after hysterectomy and the precautions to follow. That's all today. See you soon with another video research very soon.